Well, hello and welcome back to a little mini episode of Reviving an Idler. Uh, this one follows on from the last update, episode 17, and it's basically a how to make video for these uh, little general templates here. This one for the hole in the planking, and this one for the actual uh, Gerald itself. And the whole premise behind this is to create a, a template that allows us to create a reliable and repeatable uh, recess and the matching Gerald or Dutchman that will simplify the uh, repair process by making things uh, more streamlined. So I can create a lot of holes that all match the same, uh, with a lot of biscuits that match the same, and then I can just glue, 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 and they're all in one uh, place. There is another episode coming very, very hot on the heels of this one, which is going to cover uh, plugging um, and the different types of plugs that we're using at the moment, um, which kind of goes hand in hand with this Geralding uh, and Dutchman uh, situation we have at the moment. Uh, but that's a slightly larger scope, so I'm going to keep that to a, a separate episode. In the meantime, I'm just going to focus on actually how we go about planning and, and cutting these templates. Okay, so the idea is we have a piece of planking like this, something like that, okay. Let's just see, etc, etc, goes that way, goes that way. And we have a nail hole, but we've got corrosion all around it. We need to get rid of that. So the easy thing to do is to take a square, cut it out. That's obviously going into the planking. And then we can fit a, a new plug into there, glue that in place, and that uh, clears up the issue. Okay, shape, um, fairly straightforward. That's sort of your kind of standard, more traditional uh, shape. So your hexagonal. Um, it make, looks nice to have them completely symmetrical. It doesn't actually matter how symmetrical they are. It just looks uh, perhaps more professional if they are perfect. Uh, this one clearly isn't. But again, that doesn't uh, really matter. So we can have our hexagonal plugs. Something like that. Uh, you can also have a square. And this would be a traditional uh, Dutchman is, is this form. And that looks a little bit like this, the flat bottom. Okay, and that again is, is a plug that goes in that way, but the bottom ends are sort of uh, scarfed almost into the rest of the planking. Okay, and that's uh, again a very traditional form of, of the repair work. Uh, I'm going to favour this type of plug rather than the other one, um, because there's a lot more mechanical advantage in it. When it's sitting inside of its recess, it uh, fits very square, very snug into there, and there's very little room for it to, to wiggle uh, back and forth. Uh, there's resistance there from the wood uh, to stop it from, from moving around. So once that's actually glued in there, there's, there's almost no room for it to go anywhere at all. So, so if the plank were to try and flex that way, it's still biting down on the plug. That is less so with that type, because if it was to flex away and that glue join was to fail, it just pops right out. So, Let's make some plugs. Now, one of the first things we need is uh, something to make the template out of. I like to use MDF as it's a, a really simple, easy to use material. It carves well, it holds its edge nice and straight. It can be cut from any angle. There's no grain uh, orientation to worry about. It's nice and easy uh, to, to work with. Uh, so that's the reason I use that. We need a datum or at least a, a straight line to work from. And for that, I've just simply planed one edge here, nice and flat and true, and that's going to be my datum. All measurements come from that one line, okay? So what we're looking to try and do is uh, basically cut a hole in here to try and make this sort of thing. And do that by simply deciding on our sizes. I think it doesn't really matter at this stage, you can be any size you like. Uh, it depends on the size of Gerald you want to go for. Uh, I'm just going to draw a line here, roughly speaking. 50 mil in, two inches. I want the Gerald to be about two centimeters thick, so I just simply slide back on this by two centimeters, about 30 mil, make a mark at that, and then trace the next line along. Magic. 
Next thing I want to do is I want to mark the total length and for it's going to be around about 100 mil, so that's what, about 4 inches or so. Okay. Mark off roughly 100 mil. Magic. Let's bring these lines up to meet. Okay. Now the V shape is going to be one centimeter back. So let's get quite close in with that, and let's just try to be a bit more accurate now. One centimeter back. One centimeter back, and we're going to draw that line up again. Super duper. Now the next thing we need is going to be uh, a centre line. Now we could have done that in the first place. Magic. And then our triangle is going to be where that line crosses there and where that line crosses there. Match them all up. I can do it so I can actually see. Now dead simple, next thing I need to do is just cut that out. Now I'm going to use the router to do that. Now the only issue with using the router to do that is obviously we have this cutting edge, this spinning cutting edge. And the closer I bring that to the line that I've drawn, the more likely it is that the cut into that and give us a sort of wavering effect. So I need something solid to bump that up against so it can't go too far wrong. And for that, the manufacturers of the routers generally give us a, a fence of some sort uh, to work with. And that's going to be perfectly great. So we'll pop it onto the router, get it all lined up um, where it needs to be, so we can then start cutting that line. And once we have a nice clean uh, template, cut it like that, all we've got to do is just rough out uh, the outside edges and that gives us uh, the first part of the mould. Now you may recognise in the background uh, an old familiar friend, the uh, Aunt Agatha, a little tender dinghy that I built a couple of years ago. Uh, she's come back home to undergo a little bit of a winter refit. There's a few little odd jobs I'd like to do, uh, such as extending the oars because they're just a little bit too short. Uh, I'd like to remake the rudder. Uh, I'd also add, like to add a couple of thwarts. One up forward so that I can have somebody in the back and still be able to roll from a forward position. And that will also entail the moving of the roll box forward as well as general cosmetic touching up, repainting, all that kind of good stuff. So. Uh, Keep your eyes out for that, that's hopefully going to be online in the next couple of months. Um, hopefully just in the nick of time for you guys to get any kind of other work done in the lead up to the summer season. Now the next bit should be uh, fairly straightforward. So what I want to try and do is use the template we've just cut. I'm going to use it like a stencil and that's going to allow us to cut out a little shape that looks a little bit like this. Now this is an important step because you would think that you could just pop this down and then draw around it and that will give you the plug shape. Yes it would, but what it doesn't prove is how true and how square your actual template is. Now because I'm using a router which does cut a very clean 90 degree uh, with its uh, profiling bit, if there's any discrepancies, which there's likely to be because I've been using a chisel and I've not been checking it, um, if there's any discrepancies that will show up when we cut out a plug. 
So that's the first thing I want to do is just try and make a plug. And if it fits in there, smooth and snug, then great, we've done it, everything's perfect and we don't have to go any further with it. But uh, most likely what it's going to do is it's is going to produce a graving piece which doesn't quite match perfectly to the template. Um, that means when I cut graving pieces properly, I'll use this as the template to make them, and then that to cut the rooted hole in the planking. Now everything has a thickness and every thickness will add an inaccuracy into measurements and over time that will compound and become a greater and greater and greater inaccuracy. Okay, so we can always, so to combat that we always use the smallest possible mark we can get. Now in the previous bit when we're making our actual uh, template this is all kind of irrelevant, okay? We could draw that by hand, root out the shape, and it'll still give us just the same uh, standard of, of template, okay? It doesn't need to be anything uh, particularly fancy, okay? Measurements make it a bit easier to make it symmetrical, uh, but again, that's not an absolute necessity in any way, shape, or form. But when we actually want to try and cut out this piece, we need the smallest error margin possible. And for that, I like to use a marking knife, and we can clean up that line by popping the edge of the blade into the actual groove that we've already scored by drawing around that. Bringing the ruler up to meet the knife so it's flush, holding it in place. Again, pop the blade into the groove on this side, give it a wiggle so you know it's not going to move, and then you can move the ruler against the knife. Okay? Check it by eye, go back and forth a few times if you need to, um, and then that will give you your true line, and you can do a deeper score with the knife then, along the side of a steel rule, just to make sure that it is absolutely embedded exactly where you want that line to be. Gives you a cleaner, truer line to work to, makes things a bit easier. Now, just like a Morton tenon, the next thing we need to be doing is just cutting that out. We want to take our time, go slowly, match the lines as best as possible. The cleanest, most accurate cut we're going to get is with the saw. We may then need to file it down uh, to try and bring it back into shape, but we'll do that by fairing it against the actual plug itself. Now, as you've seen, I've just uh, finished cutting it up and I used this as the template. And to prove my point, this now should, in theory, fit perfectly into this, right? It is still wildly different. And I could probably force that and bend it into place. But that's not the point. We don't want to force and bend things. We want it to fit perfectly. So that is the reason that we then take this and we make this fit this hole. You could do it the other way around. You could make this fit this if you wanted, but it's easier to fit this to this hole here. And then use that as your template for making the actual graving piece rather than trying to draw around that template there. Okay. Seems odd, seems counterintuitive, but trust me, it'll always happen. You're always better to make your mold and work from that shape than to work from this shape. Moving on to the actual Gerald or the Dutchman itself or the graving piece, we need to first get hold of some stock. And in our case, on the idler project, we're going to be looking at using old wood taken from the boat, actual old planking. And in this case, we're going to use the garboard plank. Now, it 
always seems a shame to cut up part of uh, the boat that you're supposed to be putting back together. Um, but this wood is gone. There is, you can see, there's a large crack running through it here. In fact, I can actually basically crack that in half. Um, so that's obviously not going to go back into the boat. It's completely damaged. Um, general rot wear and tear, old fastenings, etc., mean that this is only really suitable for possibly using as a template or um, more realistically using what good wood is left in this and there is some very very good quality wood in there um, as plugs and gerald and, and bits for repairs so it's good wood to hang on to it has got uh, plenty of life left in it in places and um, as long as you're being selective in what you're doing and as i have said in previous projects um, the wood that went into these old boats was of extremely high quality. And even Idler, which was built fairly light, fairly cheap, um, has better wood than you can, generally speaking, get your hands on today without paying an extremely high uh, fee for it. Um, and still has that lovely pitch pine smell, which is almost impossible to get today. Mmm. So we give that a nice light dressing, just a quick going over with the plane, just to make uh, one side clean and flat so that we can use our templates properly. So for this one we are making a Dutchman Gerald, one of the nice clean angled ones. Locate a position on the planking. Again, grain orientation is important because if the plank uh, swells this way, remember they're all quarter sawn, so the, the grain runs across the plank like this. I want the plug to expand the same direction as the planking. So if it, as it swells and expands, the plug itself or the gerald itself will expand in the same direction. So we want to make sure that we're using the planking stock of a similar grain size, etc. So it's all going to hopefully move as one together. So we plonk our template down in such a location where the grain is going to be running through it. And then we just pop in this little bit here to boost her up. Check that it's flush, which it is, make sure it's not going to go anywhere, and then pop the router in, and uh, that's it, we just follow that profile, we just cut it out, simple as that. basically our graving piece and our Gerald. It uh, might need a little bit of cleaning up, a little bit of fairing as it goes in, uh, but generally speaking that's going to be pretty much it ballpark. It's only going to be a little bit of shaving or a bit of filing um, as we install them. Well, all I've got to do now is do that 36 times per frame all along the boat and that's us done with the uh, repairing process. Now in order to demonstrate this bit, I'm going to move up to the front of the boat because there's a little bit more space, a little bit more light and it's going to be easier for you guys to see. Uh, the bulk of the plugging and repairing is actually happening sort of amidships, uh, but up at the bow, we've got a really good one right here. Reaming out the, the sort of the nail hole before we hammered it through uh, wasn't quite enough and we actually ended up breaking quite a lot of the, the planking here. So we are looking at doing a fairly deep Fairly deep, fairly extended repair on this one. Strictly speaking, this Gerald isn't actually long enough to do the job. We should get one that's a little bit longer. Do is we'll nip down to this one here and do this one instead, and we'll make a slightly longer uh, repair job to, to cover this one because it's a little bit longer than I expected it to be. So it's, this one's not overly deep. It's only really just approaching the, the depth of the countersink. Um, so that's fine. It gives us a good demo. You could do this technique on obviously much deeper repairs, such as the one above, which is obviously uh, slightly more significant. We're going to need a quite a quite an extensive repair on that bit. But for our purposes here today, basically position that over the repair 
ideally it taking account of any extra potential damage so I, there's potential for a little bit of weakness in here although I don't see it right now there's no real evidence but there is potential so I'm going to back this off to cover uh, a little bit extra on the other side of the nail and then we just want to just tack that in place so it doesn't shift about Making sure your tacks or your screws, whichever you're using to attach it, uh, remain flush because this flat surface here is obviously what the router is going to slip about on. So you want that to be nice and flat. All we're then looking to do is use the same profiler bit on the router or router, uh, clean out that hole there, use a chisel just to clean up the angles, make it all smooth and sharp, and then that's it. Glue in the Gerald. By the way, a profiler bit looks like that. Can you see that? Pop that into the deepest bit of the hole. Level it out. Back it off a mill or two. So that'd be about a sixteenth of an inch, something like that. Just so that you are cutting in deeper than the deeper part, deepest part. And then you'll end up with something that looks a bit like that. Now assuming everything went to plan, that should fit nicely in there. That's pretty good to me. Job's a good one. Get some glue. I'll probably cut that in half because it's quite shallow and reuse the rest of the plugs. We don't need all that wastage. Cut that in half. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and possibly found it useful. Um, thank you for watching, sharing and subscribing and being a part of the Reviving an Idler project. The project is uh, largely self-funded with the exception of a core crew of very generous patrons. Um, a massive shout out to you guys. You're uh, always legends and uh, thank you so, so much for your help and support. I value it more than anything. To everyone else at home, uh, keep the comments coming. I absolutely love to read them. They're hugely uplifting and they're a massive morale booster uh, when things get a little bit tiring or, or, or slow going on the boat. So um, thank you very, very much to everyone who has uh, helped out in some way, shape or form in the project.